episode of Jay Leno's Garage. The car we're featuring today, 2017 Vanderhall. Now, if you've never heard of that, that's not unusual because it's a, it's a new car. It features a uh, four-cylinder, 1.4-liter turbocharged engine from GM, about 180 horsepower. It has uh, three wheels, has a six-speed transmission. I'm fascinated by this because this is a classic example of boutique manufacturing. You know, here in America, as manufacturing becomes more efficient, more and more people are being able to get into the car business. And uh, that's what makes this so interesting. Let's meet the man behind this, uh, Steve Hall. Steve, come on in. Now, you build these in Utah, right? We do. Are you the only car ever manufactured in Utah? We are. I guess that's true. OK, up in Provo, right? Eh? Yep. All right, very cool. So you were in the manufacturing business before. What's the story? No, uh, right out of college, I started a, a car dealership right. and got very familiar with servicing and selling right. uh, luxury automobiles. Right. Uh, bought a couple Noble M400s and sure. M12s, got very familiar with how uh, cars are made and how they're licensed and essentially got two of them seized by the EPA and then learned all of the, uh, the laws and regulations. Right. Now the Noble, building. if you don't know, is an English car built with a Ford V6, correct? Yeah. And it was right up there with, although it wasn't as sophisticated as perhaps Lotus and McLaren and some yeah. of the others, it was fast, it handled well. Uh, they were good cars, but they didn't meet all EPA and crash tests and all that kind Correct. of thing. Yeah, so, yeah, I know a lot of people had them seized. That's trouble with uh, building your own car. Whereas these, though, in the continental United States, they're, they're legal, right? Everywhere? Yes. Okay. Registered as a motorcycle. Right. Uh, it has 17-digit VIN. Right. EPA and CARB certified. Even so, it's legal in California, yep. Florida, Ohio. Yep. Okay. All right. Financing so, is easy okay. with NADA book and Kelly Blue Book. Now, before I tell you the price of this car, uh, as we're talking, I want you to figure out what you think the price would be. Because Morgans are about just about fifty thousand dollars out the door with a two-cylinder, and this has the four-cylinder. But we'll get to the price in, in a little bit. I think that's the most interesting part. This is. Uh, well, you're pretty much your base model. This is called the Venice. These are all Venice models. Um, tell us a little bit more. The, the, the chassis is what? Chassis is all aluminum. Um, it's a special tab and slot construction that we have patents on. And it allows us to get a very lightweight, very stiff chassis that's all welded and unitized together. So this is part of the frame. So this is all aluminum tub frame. Right. So we don't. Um, use DOM tubing and cope it and weld it together. So you've sold what, about 100 so far? Yeah, 100 Venice, and then we have another model called okay. Laguna. Okay, well that's pretty good. So they're out there on the road. Yep. Okay, very good. Disc uh, brakes all the way around. And uh, so the rear wheel is more or less just? It's just there to stabilize the rear. It right, doesn't okay. turn, just does have a speed sensor for the ABS and trash control. Right. Um, but everything's done up front. Done up front. So. The advantage is you have two wheels of traction versus one wheel of traction, yes. okay. And some little government regulation you might be wondering why you have a red center there and a yellow center in the wheels. Explain what that is. It's for the reflectors for the front and rear. So instead of us putting it on the body and messing right. up the style. Sticking it here, okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. We go, went ahead and put them on the wheels and then there's a, a cap on the other side with a reflector. You know, a lot of people who comment on the website have no idea the myriad of government regulations. It's unbelievable how many regulations there are. So to actually build something, manufacture it, and get it out there and get it street legal, is, it's not impossible, but it's close to impossible. A lot of work. It? A lot of work. How many years to get this all certified? Uh, we prototyped uh, about 11 different variations for about four or five years. Right. And then came out with the Laguna in 16 and then the Venice in 17. Now most three-wheel motor vehicles that I see are rear-wheel drive. Why did you choose front-wheel drive? We started with front-wheel or rear-wheel drive with a Rotax, Kawasaki, and Yamaha motor and found that we couldn't get the stability right. In a parking lot we could tip it over. Really? Even with a 70 to 78 wide track in the front. Um, so we decided to go with automotive components, front drive, right. make it a 70-30 weight distribution, and that gives us uh, the characteristics of a four-wheel car, Okay. where this is just following. Okay. Now the ABS allows you to brake better in the corners because the back end is light, right. but the ABS keeps it on the ground. Okay, interesting. 
So you feel you handle better with front wheel drive with three wheels than rear wheel drive? Yes. Okay. Interesting. Uh, other features, what do we have here? Is this your... This is a bump shifter, we call okay. the bump shifter. It's essentially a paddle shift right. to an automatic transmission. Okay. So up shift is back and down shift is forward. Six speed? Six speed. Okay. And the shift lever on the floor, what does that do? That is your park reverse neutral drive oh, okay. in manual mode, just like a car. Oh, I see. So you... Now so do you have a low also in that or no? No. Okay, so you just put it in drive there. Yep and then you shift with this here. Yeah, or oh. you, you can put it in drive mode and it will shift for you. Right. And then you can put it down one more in manual mode and that turns on your bump shifter. Okay, so it's a torque converter, not a uh, Not a dual clutch. clutch. Okay. And, and it weighs how much? 1350 drive, about 1450 wet. Okay, wow, 1450 pounds and you're, and you're hauling 180 horsepower. Yep, 185 foot-pounds of torque. Lots of torque, lots of low-end torque with that turbo. So in perspective, that would be like a normal car having 550 horsepower? Roughly. Just power to weight ratio is yeah, about the so, same. So your zero to 60 is not going to disappoint anybody. No, it's no. about four and a half seconds. Oh, that's not bad at all. That's not bad at all. I like the wood steering wheel. Now, obviously, you don't have to have an airbag or anything because you're a motorcycle. Correct. Okay. And that's got to save a lot of weight. Saves a lot of weight okay. and a lot of time. Okay. Uh, you've got roll bars here. Yep. Okay. These are structural, go down into the frame. There's a small storage compartment back here. Right. And we use a laminated automotive DOT glass. Okay. And you don't need a, a windshield wiper because, again, you're a motorcycle. Motorcycle. Okay. Very cool. Let's take a look at the engine and show you what we're talking about. Come on over here. It looks production, actually. It looks almost factory, except for this. This is you guys, right? You added yep. this smaller air cleaner. The whole intake and uh, ex the cooling pack is right. GM, right. but the intercooler is us with all the tubing. Okay. Electronics is all GM, fuse block is GM. Now the question is, your name is Hall, so what, what is Vander, where does that come from? Vander Hall, when I was trying to come up with a name, we initially came out with Hall Moto. Right. It sounded a little Japanese, didn't quite work. Yeah. So we were Hall Moto for about six months and then we changed it to Vander Hall. And Vander Hall is, a combination of my mother's maiden name, Van Dyke, okay. my last name Hall, right. and it was completely white space on the internet. Yeah, oh, okay. No one's there. Nobody's there. Hall. Okay, very cool. And explain the suspension here. <laughs> Interesting. The reason we went with a pushrod suspension inboard is because we needed to get the hood, light for aesthetic, or the hood height for aesthetics down. If we used like a traditional McPherson strut, our hood height would be about this tall, right, yeah. and we couldn't get the lines correct. Okay. So we had to come up with a way to use an independent front drive with double A-arm, and then we've got, to can we've got to basically use a push rod system to get the shock back here instead of being up here. And the A-arms are equal length? Yes. Okay. Well, uh, unequal length. Oh, okay. Top one is short, okay. bottom, bottom one is... Uh, a little longer. Are these your own pieces, these A-arms, or are those? These, these are being made for us, but they're, they're very similar to GM design. Okay, interesting. Yeah, very well put together. Let's see what else we have here. Obviously, you check your oil, everything is right here. And this hood just lifts off, correct? Yes. Now, something I thought was interesting, because I looked at this front headlight, and I said to myself, I thought maybe these opened or came up, because you're behind the grill, you say, well, if you have a headlight in there, isn't that blocking out your light? Explain, though. You have the... We have a, a tab and slot grill that is not welded together. Right. And that allows us to get an aluminum grill up here. And then we used a Cree uh, LED headlight. So each one of these are positioned to go through the grill. Right. So you don't get a grid when you turn right. on. Right. So, so the actual bulb is in the, in here. It's not, it's not hitting on the... Yes. Okay. Well, that's very clever. Very cool. And you say GM fuse box, so it's all GM. Yeah. We, we also convert the, the GM CAN bus to these uh, stepper motors. So okay. So typically an analog gauge wouldn't talk to a CAN bus automotive system. Gotcha. So they're CAN bus gauges, so they look analog, but they're all digital. Yeah. I love the analog uh, gauges as opposed to digital. Much nicer. I like the rocker switches. Those are nicely done as well. And what material is again this is? This is an ABS composite that we do in-house. Okay. We thermal form this. And this uh, it comes in three colors. This gray metallic, black metallic, 
white pearl, and a, a deep dark red. Okay, now for the interesting part. Uh, when this showed up, I was guessing 56,000, maybe 60,000 out the door. Um, what is the price? 29,950. Wow, that's pretty good. 29,950, and anywhere in the continental United States, you can drive this thing. It's it's 100% legal, meets all emissions, whatever standards you have to pass, federal, all that. That's, that's correct. Uh, yeah, that's. I don't know how you build that cheaply. I mean, a full dress motorcycle is just about the same price as that. And here you have the advantages of obviously, you know, it's three wheels and, and you know, you're sitting side by side and you've got seat belts, roll bar. Uh, what kind of mileage does it get? I'm curious. Uh, you'll get. You can get up to 40 miles right. per gallon around city or driving up. But that's like with a Japanese hunger striker driving yeah. barefoot, touching the exactly. pedal like that. You're yeah. going to get, you're going to average somewhere around 27 or 20. Yeah, and that, and that means you're driving flat out all the time. Yep. I mean, that's what, why would you have this? You know, drive around. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's that's the cool part. Well, I am anxious to take this for a ride and try it out. I mean, I find that part really amazing because you, you've seen this this the website before. We have motorcycles that are eighty, ninety, a hundred thousand dollars that are essentially hand built, and this is assembled in Provo, Utah. Yep. Okay, and it's built by Americans using American parts, which is always a big selling point in uh, in uh, the United States. Probably got a few veterans in there as well. Do. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. So, all right, let's uh, let's take it for a ride and see how it handles. stable I can't say the front wheel drive makes any difference like I say at least you got two wheels getting traction instead of just one yep. you hear that little turbo popping off you make a non-turbo version or they all turbo they're all turbo yeah and boy I got plenty of leg room and like you say it comes standard with a heater and uh, heated seats as well plus you've got, you've got like a bluetooth there yep. so you bluetooth got a sound stereo. system but without a radio you just Look yep. up your iPhone or your iPod, right? Yep. iPod, rather. Yeah, yeah. The reason we wanted to go with glass laminated windshield is just, if, if you've experienced plexiglass in race cars, right. there's just no way to get that fine, the fine scratches off the glass. Right, plus, can you have a plexiglass windshield on a production car? I don't think so. Can no, you? in the automotive you can, but since it's re registered as a motorcycle, you could. We could have done a black, uh, yeah. plastic one. So with the exception of braking, the rear wheel does nothing at all. Exactly. It's just the trailer, basically. Yep. You're just just holding up the rear. So they all come standard with traction control and ABS. Right. Uh, and the Laguna model has 
stability control also. Right. But this this model, we decided it, it was inherently stable, so we didn't include the stability control. Well, really, it's not that much more expensive than a Can-Am Spider. No. It's uh, it's actually a little less expensive than the touring model of the Can-Am Spider. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Guys, I know a big Harley with a touring package on it, or any of the big touring motorcycles, the same price. Yep. And it's a lot of fun to drive, you know? It's, uh, it has just enough horsepower to get yourself in trouble and have fun. And plus, I'm surprised you can build it for that price point. I thought for sure this would be high 40s, low 50s. That's pretty amazing. It took us a lot of iterations to get to the point where yeah. we could manufacture it at a reasonable price. Well, we built a lot of cars from scratch at our shop, and it costs a lot more than this, and they don't they don't ride as good. And we put a lot of thought into the uh, the push rod suspension to get a progressive movement, so right. it can suck up the little bumps. As you see, it corners very nicely. Maneuvers very similar to a mid-engine car where right. you don't get a lot of oversteer or understeer necessarily. Right. And if you the only way to get the back end loose is to stab the brakes, lose yeah. the traction, and then throttle through. How many people work at the factory? We got 35 now. Okay. Um, 35 can build about 500 units a year. Wow. Uh, but we've just expanded. We, we need to get to 1,000 units a year sometime next year. Yeah, that's great. I mean, it makes a fun toy, and I mean that in the best sense of the word, because most toys like this are just too expensive. Yes. And, you know, at under 30 grand, of course it's a lot of money, but it's what you'd pay for any other kind of recreational vehicle throughout the same ballpark, and it certainly is a lot of fun. Yeah, we like to think that you're kind of feel like you're driving a vintage car, but you don't have any yeah. other vintage car headache. Right, exactly, exactly. I must say, it's very comfortable. I love the wood steering wheel. Or simulated wood, is it real wood? It's real wood. Well, the most impressive thing about this car is the price. I mean, you've got a lot of automotive features. You've got heaters, you've got heated seats, you've got uh, onboard diagnostic plugs so you can uh, read from the computer and do all that stuff. I, I thought for sure this would be like 50 grand or something because that's what the Morgan is. And this has got twice as many cylinders and it's fast and uh, it's made in the United States and the build quality is really good. I mean, it shows you how using manufacturing expertise to just cut everything down to the wire and do it as efficiently as possible. I mean, we couldn't build this car at my garage for $29,000, you know, making it ourselves. So, Steve, congratulations. I think you're going to do really well with this. It's a lot of fun to drive. And uh, yeah, check, check it out. What's your website? It's VanderhallUSA.com. VanderhallUSA. The only thing I would change is I would get a digital readout so I knew what gear I'm in. So what gear you're in. Yeah, yep. we'll do that. <laughs> okay. Next generation. See you guys next week. Mm-hmm. <laughs>